Hello everyone and welcome to Jurassic World Evolution 2. It's been a while since we've been in the game, but a new DLC and the free update have both released. And there are a bunch of new features that we can check out. And I'm over at the Lagoons because some new interactions have um, been added to the Mosasaurus and the Tylosaurus. The Mosasaurus one just played out in front of me. Um, just a few minutes before starting to record and Tylosaurus well the Tylosaurus are a bit separate but if we get the opportunity we may be able to see it but let's go on to and see the more the more frequent update features that we can check out the more accessible I should say one being the new decorations so we have a bunch of new decorations uh, to check out so we've got some new picnic benches, some regular benches, and some bins. I know a majority of the community has been pining for these items for a long time and now they're finally here. However, most of them have been existing in the game for a good long while. Like if you check out over here at the monorail, you see that these bins and these benches have existed here for quite some time. And the, and the sun lounge, um, that we zip on over to our hotels is plainly visible right there. Um, don't know about the flower pots. Um, don't believe we've had flower pots at any of the buildings before, but um, yeah, I can confirm that the bins, they've been there all along. Uh, we've also got some new fountains. So this was the mystery fountain that was um, in the marine species pack announcement trailer that people were wondering about. And this one is a completely new fountain with the Spinosaurus skull in the center. We also have a couple of new flower pots. The plants will be different depending on the biome. Same with um, these fountains. They'll change based on the biome. We've also got some new signs for some of the remote viewing galleries. So the viewing dome, underwater viewing dome, and log viewing gallery all have completely new signs. So these can just be placed around your park and everything like that. So that is one of the new features. Another new feature is in capture mode. So you can change the time of day to dusk. So get a full on twilight vibe. You can also change it to night. So see now Jurassic World, completely dark, dawn. Um, and that's a good option. And midday. Okay, so that's actually quite good. Midday. That's an option. Heather. That must be just a typo. Um, default is, like, normal time. Um, and weather, it should be. Uh, so you could have some overcast. Let me speed that up. Completely cloudy. And a bit of mist and fog um, rolling in. And have a rainstorm. Well... Light rain. Light rain. Default. So it doesn't seem like you can. So that should clear up. Uh, there we go. That's all cleared up now. Oh, damn it. Tylosaurus, man. You're supposed to not be <laughs> suffering any discomfort. So that's um, a couple of the features. Let me just check the notes. Um, so a few other uh, new features include uh, species unlock shuffling. So if you're in the uh, in the research and you want to make a custom challenge mode, you can change the order in which species are unlocked. So that's a interesting feature. You've also got automated hatcheries. So um, if you go into here, you can automate bay, select a species of dinosaur, say if I wanted a few Sinusoroptrix, bigger in automation, you can have a select number, in this case you can have 30, um, and what that will do is it will, the hatchery on its own will maintain that population that you set for the hatchery, so there's 30 Sinusoroptrix, if any die and or are killed, um, the hatchery will replace it to maintain that population value. So you can release it from the gate, however they will only release one at a time. Or you could do airlifts. Or manual. So, um, you pick which one you want. But, um, yeah, it's different for any, 
for all these different dinosaurs. So Spinosaurus, you can have up to five. Um, if I could, Scorpius Rex, let's see how many you can have. Five. So it seems like many of the largest predators will have that. Although, let me just check what Carnotaurus has got. <laughs> Because they usually release with about five, so oh, didn't go the right one. There we go. So Carnotaurus can release with ten. That is quite a lot of Carnos. Um, but yeah, so that's basically how those work. If I look back at the notes, um, there's some pack chase behavior that we might be able to see um, a little later on. Pre-built layout, so um, if for particularly the mission maps and challenge mode maps. They will all have uh, sort of pre-built levels. So, um, yeah, that's sort of what that is. <laughs> so you can just have access to the park that you that Frontier built for you for those levels and do whatever you want with it. Uh, also, you may notice that we're in that Jurassic World. I've done some tweaking since I actually did the tour, but um, I mean, I've also tweaked it to accommodate this video. Uh, let's see, catch them airlift releases, so the airlift releases will now queue. We go into the gene library, so have a look in here. There is now a search bar, so you can just search. So let's say Tyrannosaurus, we can find, well, if we just go Tyran, we'll find Tyrannosaurus Rex and Euteranus. So, and even if you just do T, you'll come up with all the dinosaurs that have T in their name. And if you do S, it's pretty much every dinosaur that's ever existed. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a um, handy new tool, given the roster is so expansive now. Uh, let's have a look. Path Replacement Brush. Now, this is another one that's um, popped up. So, if you wanted to replace the path, you can um, use the brush and replace it. So, if I wanted to replace these paths, they will just, boom, all that. Done in a clean sweep. Uh, let's have a look. Um, it will also show unresearched feeders in the build menu. So if you've been researching in challenge mode, some of the unresearched feeders will still show up in the in the build menu, just probably with a lock sign on them. I haven't tested this out for myself, but um, it's probably going to be something like that. Park teams will also pass through your tour gates, so that'll be handy if you've got a tour reliant park and you don't really want to use any more money by placing actual gates around so the teams the both the ranger and mvus they can all get through that um however another major feature of this update are new variants so we have a new variant for allosaurus the allosaurus 2022 there we go So, there we are. Beautiful new Allosauruses. So, they've all got their own new patterns and colours. So, yeah, you can make some really funky new Allosauruses, as well as some new colourful Brachiosaurus. With the Brachiosaurus 2001. Now, they are a bit slow, so... Oh, this one's blank. Damn it. You look like a Jurassic Park Brachiosaurus, don't you? Okay, this last one's got a pattern on it, I can tell for sure. Yeah, <laughs> that just looks like Jurassic Park Brachy. Yeah, so you can see here, they've got a much more vibrant pattern on these. On these guys. Oh, look at the blue. I'm a sucker for blue things. Blue's my favorite color, so... That's surprising coming from... A guy called Red Panda Reggie, isn't it? You'd think my favourite colour would be red. Yeah. Funny how all the species that they did were Jurassic creatures alongside a Cretaceous pack. Um, and the last of the dinosaur variants is Stegosaurus 997. So, Lost World Stegosaurus. See here with some brand new skins and patterns. Let me just speed that up. I did get a Lost World Stego as part of this group. So look at these guys, absolutely glorious. Some of them looking similar to Camp Cretaceous Stegosauruses somewhat. One day, one day we'll get those Stegos, but this is great. Yeah, 
many many Jurassic fans absolutely adore the Lost World Stegosaurus. But their favorite in the franchise has just had such an impactful scene. So yeah, we can see that we have both Lost World and Jurassic World Stegosauruses as separate variants. So that is brilliant. If we hop over to our Avery now, we will be able to see the new Pterosaur variants. These being for Dimorphodon 2022, as we will see here. Let us not forget they are absolutely minuscule. So yeah, you can change the pattern. The, f the Picno fibers on the back won't change, but what will change is the overall pattern and the skin. So you can now have some little colorful Dimorphodons flapping around your aviaries. But other than that, you also have the Jurassic Park 3 Pteranodon, aka Pteranodon 2001. I want a dinosaur is comfortable. Oh, okay. Woo. Not right now. <laughs> uh, boy. There we go. Thank you, Woo. Here we go. So here we have the Jurassic Park 3 Pteranodon with all new skins and patterns. However, I think I got a bunch of blank ones. Yeah, these guys aren't really showing off the pattern too well, although this guy is. I mean, it's not too distinct, but um, yeah, that's pretty much what the pattern's supposed to look like for these guys. So for those who are not a fan of Jurassic World's Pteranodon, you now have the option of using a variant based on Jurassic Park 3's, which in the minds of many is the better Tyrannodon. So, at least you have a choice now. So that's that's great. Um, yeah, so other than all those update features, we of course have the Cretaceous Predator Pack. And what better to start with, with one of the most requested dinosaurs of all time, Concavenator. <laughs> Look at you. I love the detail with the quills here. It looks fantastic. Much smaller than most people would originally think, but yeah, it was one of the smaller carnosaur species. But a very distinct one at that with its unique hump. Yeah, it's great to see this guy in the game. First introduced in Fallen Kingdom as a um, diorama. Um, statue? I don't think it was a statue, but maybe a stuffed individual. But, um, yeah, we've got a wide variety of different colors. Love the purple one. Oh, and they're running. And just one last one to have a look at. Might just speed this one up. Oh, these. This is a nice camera angle. And yeah, look at them perfectly. So Concavenator is one of the other species that can do sort of pack hunting. Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say pack hunting, but pack chasing of animals like goats and homocephalus, basically the prey animals. So stuff like hadrosaurs, homocephalus, pachycephalosaurs, well, actually not for Concavenator because those are actually big enough to um, fight back against the Concavenator. And um, yeah. It's not winning any fights here with Allosaurus, that's for sure. But what will is our next creature, an omnivore, the Ovi, uh, Oviraptor, <laughs> the Gigantoraptor. Oh, wow, look at that blue one. That is vibrant. Now what that reminds me of. That reminds me of the Carithoraptor from Prehistoric Planet. Oh, we're going to get a social interaction? Are we? Are we? Ah, uh, yes. Here we go. Wait, what? Oh. Setting's still in there. But yeah, that's a little bit of Gigantoraptor social interaction there. From Cavernators is pretty fun too. Sort of bites at the other one. Ooh. Taking a bath, are we? Looking at the Stegosaurus. Oh, that is a beautiful Stego. Look at that. That is wondrous. 
So we've got a few more Gigantoraptors to release. Uh, if we just speed it up here, we may get some new patterns. Wow, they are. A lot of them are green <laughs> right now. And I did randomize. So I get more variation. Oh, we got a lot of social interactions. Oh, here we go. Have one of the Gigantoraptors feeding on the ground leaf. Just pecking at the ferns. So these guys will eat from both the leaves and perfect timing from the meat. However, the only problem is they will not hunt. So predators are animals that predate. So that sort of led um, Gigantoraptor to be sort of the outlier of this pack as it does not hunt anything, but it does deliver fierce kicks to its opponents and to jeeps. Oh, look at that. Look at the speed on him. It's certainly an absolute colossus. It's, as, it's taller than Stegosaurus. And much bigger than a human being. That is an absolute monster. Oh, we might see the um, drinking animation here. So. There we go. So, like the drinking social interaction. Very nice. There's our other concavenator. Okay, here we go, concavenator. Just chilling with the Gigantoraptor. Wow, you look a lot like a macaw, Mr. Gigantoraptor. Don't know what kind, but you certainly remind me of one. If anything. So, that is two of... I guess you could say the weirdest animals in this pack. Gigantoraptor being weird itself. And concave... Oh, look at... Oh, Allosaurus. Allosaurus be mad at all these guys. Concave, they've got to run. Yeah. However, all will be running with the next dinosaur. Tarbosaurus from Camp Cretaceous Hidden Adventure. Yeah, you hear the clicking there? Maybe only just. But look at you! Look at this fearsome fella. Yep, this guy's going to dominate this enclosure now. Now, many people didn't really like the model of Tarbosaurus, but in-game, it's really starting to grow on me. Like, it's it's one of those creatures that kind of does fit the franchise a bit better. Like, we, are, we all love the accurate dinosaurs and seeing them as they truly were. That's what we get with a lot of the species in this pack, like... Species like Concavenator, based on the latest scientific evidence. Gigantoraptor, also based on the scientific evidence. And when we get to it, Utah Raptor, also being based on the scientific evidence. But with Tarbosaurus being in Carrot Cretaceous, it makes sense to just include the, the model from that. Now, it does have quite a large head, but that is characteristic of many Tyrannosaurs. They had quite large heads and small arms to help balance. But, um, yeah. In-game, Tarbosaurus has started to grow on me as a model, but um, who knows, maybe in the future, Frontier will... Um, oh, I love the roars. That is one thing I really did love about the Tarbosaurus, is the sounds it made. really has a very diverse audio set for a carnivore. Yeah, I love this guy. This guy sounds really nice. <laughs> and threatening too. But, um, yeah... Maybe Frontier could do their own variant one day, but I don't know how you do a variant for a dinosaur that's in DLC. It could be done. Still sort of waiting for that sound that it made um, when it was looking for the campers just before they opened the door in Hidden Adventure. Um, that was a really cool roar, but um, I don't think it's in the game, unfortunately. But let's see some of the new skins for Tarbosaurus. Oh, 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 these two are... <laughs> oh, these two are probably the, the 
the two coolest looking Tarbosaurus I've ever seen. It literally got a blue one and a red one. That is, that is awesome. Look at that thing. That is a beauty. Oh, here we go, social animation. Oh, there we go. Didn't like that. Didn't like being sniffed at. And if we release the, the last two, let's see what they look like. Oh, new camera angle. Oh, this is the one I've seen where it's like something comes right up close. Well, this is a nice skin. Oh, I don't mind that one either. That's like you got a security camera right there. The Tarbosaur is coming right up to it. Yeah. Tarbosaurus looking absolutely fantastic here. Um, wonder if we're going to we're actually going to see like the drinking interactions here, or like the eating interactions as well. I should probably put a lot more meat feeders around for dinosaurs to really share those kind of animations. So let's see, we can't just tempt some more carnivores to share some meals with one another. I'll just put another one here. Try encourage it a bit more. So we got the the two coolest Tarbos in the house here. Up oh, scaring off a stego. Yeah, like you can see Tarbosaurus is huge. Like it's about the same size as a stegosaurus, so it's a bit smaller than T Rex. And if you've seen some other YouTubers videos you'll notice that it is dwarfed by the T Rex. So yeah, all these Gigantoraptors and Stegas are chilling. Aloes are chilling. Tarbos are completely dominating the enclosure now. Though they're not too different in height. I actually kind of like seeing Tarbosaurus and Nizzle Nubla. That's a good feeling. The Concavenators seem to have dispersed out here. To the more open plains to avoid the clustering of the different herbivores and different carnivores just avoiding the competition a smart move however i don't think we're going to really see the oh hello hunting prey hunting prey wait what is it hunting the goat or the concavenator i oh, don't we're not going to be able to see it running into the forest damn it Oh, there we go. Whee! Two swings and then swallowed down whole. Nice. Oh, hello. Ah, oh, the Cacutaceous Tarbosaurus is going on a migration. So there's Bracky. This Bracky just got out of there. But, um, yeah, I think I've been saving this one for a bit too long. Let's see Utah Raptor. Ooh. Oh, I love those Dr Jurassic Park 3 sounds. It kind of does make sense for the Utah Raptor to make Jurassic Park Raptor sounds in this case. Because, um, boy, does it really fit. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, hang on. Oh, hello. Well, oh, look at him tumble over. Look at this guy with his blue tips. You got quite the eye for a he for a feather style, don't you? Yeah, let's release a few more just to see them. Now, something I've noticed is that the Utahraptor does not pack hunt like the other raptors in the game. So, not like the Atrociraptors, not like the Velociraptors or Pyroraptors or Deinonychuses. They um, they're more of a I think Best in Slot calls it a Smedium Carnivore, which is like a small medium carnivore. And um, basically that's your larger end on the small carnivore. So the animals that will be using the pack chase behavior to hunt their prey. So this list comprises of animals like... Oh, hello. Oh, what happened to you? Low in health. Oh, you need food. Oh, dear. 
Uh, oh dear. <laughs> um, might just try and keep the Bracky alive. There. Oh, hello. Oh, oh. Just going to see if we can catch this. Let's see. There's actually sort of an interaction here. Maybe not. I think they're trying to get the animation to happen, so they're just going to keep on drinking. Okay, these... They're trying to get the animation to work. But, um... It doesn't seem to be working out for them. But, oh my goodness, look at all the Utah Raptors. But, um... Yeah, I'm not really going to show them killing anything. Because that's not really my style. Um, but... If you want to see the cool killing, killing animations that all these creatures have, except for the Gigantoraptor... Um, there are many videos that show them, so Tarbosaurus will... Miss the guest initially... And then whip back around and grab him. Concavenator will throw them over its shoulder. And throw them to the floor. And Utah Raptor will make the guest run into them and then um, finish them off. So, certainly an interesting strategy on, on their part. Um, but before the video ends, why don't we just duck back over to the lagoon to see if we can, can't just catch a interaction. Potentially. Maybe not. <laughs> that doesn't look like it's going to happen anytime soon. Like, the Entalos are close, but the Moses aren't. But, um, yeah, I think that'll have to do it for the video today. Um, if you like the um, Cretaceous Dinosaur... Uh, Cretaceous Dinosaur Pack? Cretaceous Predator Pack, I do really recommend picking it up. It's got some great creatures. Utah Raptor probably being my favourite. Tarbosaurus is also up there. I know mo most people don't like the model, but... This this guy. This guy looks so cool. <laughs> he, he really does. And Gigantoraptor is pretty fun too. And if you've wanted Concavenator for a long time, here he is. And, yeah. I'd eat the meal while it's hot. So, um, yeah. And without further ado... I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye, guys.